Y'all are not gonna believe this, but Moody, M Moody got out. What is going on, Cog Squad? Yeah, I wanna give you guys an update real quick on the Barnuminium, because I know a lot of you guys are gonna want to know what's going on with it. Uh, the builders hopefully be back next week, but the plumbing situation, I just wanna say thank every single one of y'all. Oh my gracious, we got so many messages and emails since that last video we got so many options now versus to what we had a few days ago um, i've had plumbers reach out to me that are fans of the channel saying they would help us virtually uh send the send them the plans they would lay it all out tell me what to buy just all kinds of options now and just so much love and i want to thank you guys so much for that and that's what we're doing we're weighing all of our options uh, we've had some local plumbers that have been suggested to us that we've reached out to. I had Dutch, I called Dutch, and he gave me his advice and what he did. And so we got a lot, a lot of options now. And we're just weighing in our options and seeing what we're going to do. I kind of really want to try it myself if I can get over that hump. I really want to. But one thing's for sure, Greg, Greg's still here. He's uh, He just cut his bulldozer or something off <laughs> but he's still here and he told me this morning that he may have a plumbing option so when he gets off this evening he'll probably get with me and go over that as well but yeah just thank you guys man whoo but hopefully the trusses will be in next week fingers crossed fingers fingers crossed that they'll be here and brent and his crew can come and get started on building the barnuminiums again and speaking of brent he also told me that he'd help me do the plumbing. Uh, he would just, you know, have to kind of work it in his schedule, but he would help us as well. So, yeah, it's looking good. Looking really, really good. Especially compared to a few days ago where we were kind of, but it's all right. It shall pass and we'll get this thing handled. Who's ready for a morning snack this morning? Come on, babies. Come on, boys and girls. Yeah, I hear you, Tommy. I hear you, Tommy. There's Miss Jeannie and her husband, Forrest, right there. Enjoying a little soak in the tub this morning. There's Miss Bobby. I always say Bobby. That is Miss Cheryl. I'll get in big trouble, won't I? That's Cheryl right there, that beautiful white silky. I don't show her very much, but that's Ono right there. She is a Yokohama. I think that's right. But that's what she is. She's a fairly old chicken. Corny over there. His beautiful self. His cream leg bar self. He's a cream leg bar. And there's our other rooster. Of course, y'all know who ACDC is. And that's a cream leg bar hen right there. And they got a crest on them, but you can hardly see it because their comb is so big. Not like a crest on a Polish chicken like that one right there. Of course, they got huge, giant boofs. Miss Cleo. Hey, Cleo. Now, Cleo is a cushion, and that's a mini cushion right beside her. That's a bantam cushion. So, that's a big one. That's a mini. <laughs> of course, that's a naked neck right there. That's not goat, though. Where is goat? Goats around here somewhere, I can tell you that. And that Polish is either Cotton or Dolly Parton. I can't tell them apart. Mary Carl can. I don't know how she, she finds these little subtle differences in these chickens and she can spot them. But there's the other one over there by Loki. Now Loki's that uh, golden sea bright rooster right there. Look, now there's another cushion. That one right there looks like Cleo's twin. There's Cleo. And there's Cleo's mini me right there. They're the same pattern, which is called a partridge. That's the coloration on Cleo. She is a partridge cushion. There's a white one. See that white Polish over there? That's Q Tilt. And uh, oh, this is one of my favorites right here. Y'all see her running right there? That is pumpkin. Let me go over there closer to her. She has got the most perfect shape and form, in my opinion. Even though her boost's not that big, she just looks spectacular to me. Don't our booth just look, I mean it looks just unreal in my opinion. Even though it's not a huge 
booth like a silky normally has. It's just, she is pretty. There's Miss Bobby. Ain't she a beautiful silky? She is very, very pretty. And here's another silky. I mean, this ain't a silky. This is a showgirl. Now, this is one of Mary Carl's most friendliest chickens. This is Bandit. Now, she loves Mary Carl and Brooke. Oh, Bandit. And there's another one of our older chickens. It's been around for a little while, and that's Emu. Emu is a showgirl. Mary Carl named him Emu because she said he looked like an emu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tommy's on it. Yo, I gotta be quiet. Moody is asleep. He's dead asleep. Him and the boys, all three of them, they are laid out in the hay in the sun, just sleeping away. They ain't the only ones asleep. Hey, look at that. Sonny's snoozing in the sun. Peaches is snoozing in the sun. Mildred's not snoozing, but she's sunning. Oh, she may be. There she's closing her eye. There she goes. <laughs> Foxy over yonder. See Foxy. Everybody's enjoying this beautiful morning we're having today. But speaking of Moody, I gotta tell y'all something that happened just the other day with Moody. It was pretty scary. So I went and fed Moody and the boys, like I always do. I went out of the gate, and then I went and I fed Nugget and the geese, and I loved on Nugget for a little bit. And then I walk around, and I check on everything, and depending on where Brooke is in the process of filling up waters, I may fill up Peach's water, um, I may check the goat's water and fill it up. And then what kind of share duties with the chicken waterers and make sure they're all filled up. Then I went and started cleaning my barbecue grill. So I was cleaning my barbecue grill, just not paying any attention to what was going on. And I looked up and there was Big Moo Man out of the pasture, out in the middle of the, the yard area here, right in front of the pastures, just grazing on some of this winter rye that had come up earlier. And I was like, oh my gracious. So I sent Brooke a text. I said, I need your help. Moody's out. So Brooke came on outside and then I had started and went over there and got a feed bucket, but he started headed towards the house area over here. And so I went and got a feed bucket, but I didn't have time to grab any feed in it because he was moving pretty darn fast. So I grabbed the empty feed bucket and started calling him thinking he'd see that feed bucket and come on back. Well, he never would look at me. He was so curious as to what was going on down here that he never would look at me at the feed bucket. Then he stopped at the girl's goat pen and him and Bootsy made eye contact and they were kind of looking at each other. But then he could smell the feed in the girl's feed barrel, obviously, because he started nudging it. And I thought, this is gonna be awful. If he dumps that feed barrel over and that goat feed goes all over the ground, will never get him away from there. I mean, he's huge. I'm not for sure how much he weighs, but we were towed by the farrier anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. And that's before we started feeding him with the feed we're feeding him and stuff. That's right when we first got Moody and he wasn't quite as big as he is now. Well, Brooke comes out, we're trying to get him. And y'all, you can't just grab him and pull him. You know, he, <laughs> he, he he's just huge. So I was finally able to show him the feed bucket and I got it under his nose and he saw it and he was like, oh yes, it's on. But here's the thing with him, he's so big. And when he gets excited, I mean, he just gets giddy and he starts all this skipping and jumping and just playing and he starts, you know, he just gets so excited. And he's, he's, he's just a big baby. He's so young, he's got so much energy and he starts all this skipping and jumping and he does his head like this. And you know, it's really, really cute and fun and it makes me smile when he does it. But at the same time, if you're on the side of him or near him, he could accidentally hurt you. And, and not on purpose at all. He's two years old or, or younger and he's just he's just a kid you just got to be careful you got to be careful and you can't push him you can't he, he's gonna do what he wants to do and so i had to go from the girl's goat pen to the boy's goat pen which is technically not that far but with a 1500 pound young steer that thinks it's playtime it 
gets a little scary. And we did get him back in without the boy goats getting out. That was the other thing. We were scared that the boy goats were getting out. But how did he get out? Well, that gate you know, it's just a common old cattle gate. It's got that chain that wraps around. And it's got that notch where that chain sits in. And then we put a beaner clip on it and clip it to keep it from coming off. Well, obviously, I didn't put the beaner clip back on. The gate, the wind blew. It wasn't in that notch all the way. And it blew it open. And then Moody got out. The boy goats didn't get out, which I cannot believe. Uh, they never saw it. It was all Moo Man. We had some fans send us some latches that are made for cattle gates. I'm going to install one and see if this doesn't solve our issue with Moo Man. If this works, we're going to put one on the girl goats and they'll probably get some for the rest of the pastures because, you know, that little chain hookup, you know, you know it could obviously it can come undone because it happened to us. And luckily, Moo Man didn't end up down there at the at the house site with Brant and them building and all. Wouldn't that have been something? <laughs> or Greg. <laughs> so this is the gate set up. And it looks fairly simple. Uh, we got to go run and go buy some lag boats for it. So we're going to do that in just a minute. But I want to show you guys how this thing works. This part goes on the gate. This part goes on your gate post. So I got it upside down, I think. Yeah. So when it shuts, nope, <laughs> sorry. So when it shuts, it does like that and it can't open. And you can put a lock on it if you needed to. And then open it, you just lift one of these things up and it opens and it can go either way. This should solve our gate problems and no more Moo Man getting out unless he decides to jump the fence. I don't think he can jump that high though. He might can. He might can. If he can, we're going to enter in one of them uh, equestrian contests where they do the jumping. Except I'll be riding Moody instead of one of them fancy horses. Moody's going to get some water. Moody's going to get some water. That's pretty neat. It wasn't that hard to put on either. Well, that'll prevent you forgetting to shut it. Yeah, because it'll latch automatically. And you know, it's got that thing too, so we, we could, could put, put a, a lock on it. Her. Thank you. Uh, what you think about that? You going to try to undo it? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that. Houdini. Y'all look at Mildred under her hut. That's Mildred's hut. That's Peach's hut and her minions right there. You can see her minions in the back. And then that's the goat hut. <laughs> I think Mildred shares her hut with a goat. I think so. Probably Fifi. Her and Fifi like each other. Mildred, I got your lock on, girl. I don't have to worry about you getting out and hurting yourself. That's our main concern if they get out. Is they hurt hurt themselves, and we dang sure don't want that to. We don't want that to happen. All right, since we got the latches on, the boys definitely need some hay. So we're fixing to run and go get them some hay real quick. And I think we need some goat feed too. But definitely need a round bell. We're gonna get you, Moo Man. We got your gate fixed. We fixed and get your hay fixed.
look at there. Look what just made it in. Blue man hay. Got us some hay. Well, we got and them guys some hay. Look at them waiting. And some goat feed. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, they waiting on it. <laughs> That's a big bell, isn't it? That is a big bell. Alright, you want to feed Moody? I'm going to feed Moody. I'll get the tractor over here. That'll work. Tell you how much I'm loving this gate. That's easy. Oh, here come the boys. <laughs> he went straight to the hay. Oh, I love it. Almost as much. Almost as much as Moody loves that hay. Look at him. Well, I sail across seven seas just to greet you down on my knees. I'd swim through an ocean of tears on a journey of a thousand years. As every night lay away, I look up and see your face. That golden hair and your hazel eyes are the only things keeping me alive. Oh, 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 oh. I want to know wherever you are. Oh, oh, oh. Can you hear the beat of my heart? Oh, 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 I want to know where you are. Oh, 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 oh. Are you counting on love to save stars? Mm. My journeys took me far and wide. Like I was looking for a place to hide But in the end I found nothing Just a sense of longing to look in your eyes again Every night I couldn't sleep I'd say a prayer down on my knees Lord take me home I swear I can't be without her I can't bear 